Welcome back, everybody. I, I, I'm not even sure what to say of what honor and a privilege it is to welcome June Squibb to the program. I've been watching June since 1992 in Scent of a Woman, and it seems like I've seen her everywhere and throughout <laughs> in, the last, in the last 30 years. But what surprised me is that June really hasn't appeared on screen until 1990, and she was a theatrical actress way before that and uh, doing a lot of things at Cleveland Playhouse. So I have lots of questions for June, but please allow me to welcome the wonderful June Squip to the program. Thank you. It's, it's my sincere pleasure. These are the types of conversations uh, that I wanted to have of why I started the show. Right. This, yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so thankful to you for making the time to do so. No, I'm pleased to do it. Thank you. I uh, just saw you in, uh, in Hubie Halloween. Which Hubie is, Halloween, yes. <laughs> which is such a lovely movie. And even it's though so funny. It's, he, was, he was obviously not trying to scare people, but I, who, who am not a fan of, uh, of the, uh, any horror or uh, of that type of genre, it scared me. It I, scared you? Yes, it scared me. <laughs> I, I, I always had to remind myself, okay, this is an Adam Sandler comedy. This is yeah. not meant to be scary. Oh, and that's still, funny. Some that's moments funny. still scared me. Yeah. Um, you were wonderful in it. And well, it was fun. It was such fun to do. I had never worked with Adam before, but I'm a, I'm a devotee now. I would do it anytime he asked me. He's, he's, he's wonderful. Just, he's great. He's such a leader. That's what impressed me. He takes over and he leads this group. Yeah, uh, it just, he's, he's the type of uh, an actor and a leader, as you mentioned, that um, really just enjoys uh, doing the work. And yeah, he does. Seeing all of his projects, you, you just see that, uh, that energy. And you yeah, see... I people getting together and having fun and shooting a movie and it comes across on screen every day. Yeah. And we all were, I mean, we all were, it was just, it was fun. I have no other word for it. <laughs> That's wonderful. Did they, and you're, you're wearing a wonderful assortment of my, <laughs> my t-shirts. <laughs> yeah. Did, did anybody come to you and say, June, are you okay wearing this? Or they just... No, they just sort of presented them to me. I think right. that was the best way. They presented the, the first one, of course, the voter yeah. donor. Yeah. And then, but what was funny is they, the writers were comics working with Adam. There was one guy especially that was. And they kept coming up with ideas for new shirts. And the poor costume department was going crazy, trying to get all these shirts done that they came up with. Oh, my goodness. How many shirts did they have left that they did not have a chance to shoot? Oh, I, I'm sure there were at least three or four that were never seen that they had made up because they were so funny. That's great. Which one did you get to keep? Boner Donor. And I, I didn't keep any of them, but they <laughs> sent me one. Netflix sent me a boner donor shirt. That's awesome. I, I love it. <laughs> it was it was definitely surprising, but it was perfect. I, yeah. Such a great thing. And um yeah, so I again, you know, seeing you uh there just made me uh you know, made me knock on wood and cross my fingers of uh, right. still being so active uh on on screen. It's it's wonderful to see. It's amazing. I don't know how it happens, but it does. <laughs> I just shot a, a Zoom reality film, not reality film, a Zoom feature film. Yep. And how so, I mean, I'm still going. Yeah, knock on wood. And by the way, happy uh, happy birthday on November 6th. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. My my parents are sending their regards. Uh, my parents ah. are both uh, 83, so they're uh, they're looking at you and uh, drawing. <laughs> Yeah. So. I, I'm very proud of it now. There was a time when, in New York years ago when I would take five years off always. But now, no, I, I insist on the whole 91 years. That's wonderful. Um, <laughs> as, as you should, you've had a marvelous career. Yeah. I, I, I still uh, you know, can believe that you started uh, really on screen at, uh, at 60. Um, mm -hmm. 
what led you to uh, to start doing things on screen? Because you were a theatrical actress for so long. Well, I was in New York, and uh, I I was working all the time, mm -hmm. and I was doing a lot of regional work. And uh, I went to my agent one day, and I said, I think I should do some films. I said they're shooting more and more here in New York, and mm -hmm. I know so many actors that are doing you know, small things in these films. He said, okay. And about the next week, I saw Woody Allen. And that was my first film, was Alice. Wow. And uh, he, I mean, it was no big deal for, as far as he was concerned. But yeah, June should be doing this stuff. So that's how it happened. Listen, As simple listen. as that. What, what would have happened 20 years before if you had asked? That's, that's what I want to know. I probably, I think the answer would have been no at that point. But by then I had, you know, done quite a bit and a lot of people knew me. So yeah. it was, it was just sort of the right time for it to happen. Wonderful. And when did you start? What was your first voiceover role? Because you've done, you know, Toy Story, you've done a number well, of... Well, Toy Story was my first voiceover wow. role. <laughs> Wow. They asked me to do it, and I was thrilled, and um, so I did it. And now I've got two TV series, cartoon series, that I'm a regular on, and another one that I've started. So it's fun. We do it in my closet, which is right here beside me. Perfect. Perfect. And Kelly, and my assistant, and, and Kelly Sweeney, is my uh, technician. And that's wonderful. Listen, yeah. that's 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 kind of the silver lining in what's happening now. Is yeah, that, I can do it here. Yeah, yeah, you you get to do a lot of stuff at home, yeah. and I I know we still kind of send in self tapes. Do you send in self tapes, or it's it's a different? Well, here? I do for voiceovers. Okay. I don't I don't audition anymore for roles. Right. That's what happens when you get a, an Academy Award nomination. I, I, so. I swear, it just was like, boop, that was it. Wow. But uh, for the uh, voiceovers I do, I send in voice uh, over my phone. Okay, I get yeah. you. So uh, let's, let's go back to what you just mentioned. So uh, once you got your nomination for Nebraska, that's when you stopped uh, having to audition. But uh, exactly, it was like immediately. Well, you, you joined the club and that's it. I that's joined the works. club. <laughs> and they felt that, well, that now they could say yes or no to me, so they do. Okay, so the process now is you get approached with a number of scripts and yes. decide which project? Okay. Yes, that's exactly what happens. And what have you, what have you found, uh, you know, this year obviously has been a very difficult year for everybody. Um, have you been able to do anything other than voiceover work? Uh, not really. <clears throat> I was doing a film for Disney in Boston when the whole thing happened in March. So they sent us home and uh, there were to be scenes done, but they decided to animate it. So I did voiceover for that in the studio, though I did go to 20th and, and or Fox and did the uh, voiceover in, this, in the audition, audio studios there. Interesting. Well, yeah. um, what what have you been doing uh, with your time? Have you had a chance to write or, uh, you know? I am a, a, at a reader, a devout reader. I would read, I used to, when I was a kid, read the uh, cereal boxes at breakfast. I mean, I was reading constantly and I still do. So mm -hmm. that, it's been a joy for me. And I have two cats and so they're loving it that I'm not racing off somewhere. Yeah. Uh, do you watch anything? Have you had a chance to catch up on any, uh, you know? Yeah, I, I watch a lot of PBS mm -hmm. and I watch a lot of uh, CBS. I watch a lot of the cop shows. I love cop shows. <laughs> so I watch CSI and, and uh, the, the FBI, the new ones and everything. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. those. Yeah, we, I've, I've, I've spoken with some people from those shows. I, I certainly enjoy those also. Yeah, they're great. So let's, uh, let's talk about your career because, again, you started out uh, in the theater. Um, mm -hmm. And what was the impetus for you getting into acting? Uh, by the way, I, just as a side note, uh, I'm in Chicago, and I know you were born in Illinois as well. So yeah. welcome home, anyway. <laughs> 
Uh, well, yes, Southern Illinois, which is about as far from Chicago as you can get yeah. in every respect. Yes. But I uh, I was born in Illinois, and I did, I, I actually, you know, I have said this, I came out of the womb knowing I was an actress, and that's true. I don't think there was ever a moment in my life when I did not, in my gut, say to myself, well, you're an actress. Wow. So that's what happened. And despite so many things in my way, I managed to do it. And that's that's great. And again, it's it's that intention and purpose. It, yeah, determination. I, I I think if the one word you know to describe what I had always was determination. I was determined to do this. And but I I did you know little. I danced actually first, mm -hmm. and I danced in different things in Illinois when I was in high school, and somebody told me about the Cleveland Playhouse just strangely enough I mean I didn't know anything about it hmm. and I applied and got in as an apprentice so I spent five years there before I ever went to New York and it was wonderful because I grew up you know I, I went there as a practically a child and, and did grow up I got married there my first husband and it was a, a learning process I, we worked constantly we were never not working in the theater yeah, that's that's how you get to grow as a as a performer. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, in terms of your in terms of the approach, right? In those five years in uh, in Cleveland, what were some of the things that um, you know functionally uh, set you up as an actress for your success down the road? Well, then I was really working on instinct. I really had never studied acting. I had studied dance mm -hmm. and. Uh, I studied voice uh, singing all the time in Cleveland and New York, mm -hmm. but I never had studied acting. And uh, I, I, it was a pure instinct. Everything was done with instinct. And sometimes it was great and sometimes it wasn't so great. But a friend of mine was the musical director and they were starting musicals in Cleveland. And I, he, he felt that I should sing, so he started me singing. And I ended up doing all the comedians and all the musicals that they did. So I had a huge thing happening to me there that was very different for me. And uh, I loved it. I enjoyed it. And critically, it was, they were received very well, and I was received very well. So it was sort of a turning point in my life then. And the first of many, I might say. <laughs> is is that what uh, uh, led to New York after? Uh, well, New York, yes, because my first years in New York were completely musical comedy. I did nothing but musicals. Yeah. I think I did one straight show uh, off Broadway at the time, but basically I was considered a musical actress. I did nightclub reviews. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of that. So... That's what I, I became when I first went to New York. And I wanted, I've always wanted to act. I always wanted that to be, you know, what was primary in my career. Mm -hmm. And I actually <laughs> met a, an acting teacher, fell in love, married him, and was taught how to act. That's, wow. That is exactly what happened to me. Well, and he was a wonderful teacher. And I don't think I would be doing film if it were not for him because his whole thing was reality. That's what he wanted from actors. And that's what he taught me. And he taught me how, he taught me how to work. I didn't know how to work at all. Mm -hmm. His name was Charles Kakatsakis and uh, he had a lot of students through the years. And I was, we used to scream and yell at each other in class because I was like, uh, he dragged me into this screaming and yelling, really. Yeah. And he was he was determined that I was going to learn all of this, and I did. Well, I, and good for you for listening to your spouse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, putting putting all sorts of dynamics in play as as a as a husband and a teacher. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I could still hear the class laughing and us yelling at each other. Yeah, I'm sure it was entertaining. You know, yeah. So, and it's interesting that, again, right now everything is about realism. 
and mm -hmm. how small can you be and how you know you shouldn't be seeing any acting choices on screen yeah it mm -hmm. should all be grounded so and he was uh, teaching you that uh, you know before you uh, went into cinema uh, uh, quite quite a ways before that so yeah what happened to uh, when I did musicals I was considered realistic mm. <laughs> in in my work at the time so I think I always tended towards this but he finalized everything for me he made it all so i understood it and could use it yeah so uh was you know being a realistic uh, actress uh, looked down upon at that time no no not no in fact i think that's many reasons why i worked in musical because there was a, a sense of reality what i did and at that time there wasn't a lot in in many of the musicals the broadway musicals especially would not be that real yeah uh so how were you seeing that you know the industry kind of progress as you went through it it became more realistic what other things have changed that you've seen well, uh, certainly in the musical theater, there's been tremendous changes. I went back in 2019 and into Waitress. Yeah. I did the role of the uh, male character actor in it. And uh, which, there, which there's one? a different, what? Which role? I, I, I know Waitress, I love the musical. The, uh, the old man that owned oh, the show. Yes. Yeah, they changed it to a lady and I did it. Yeah, it's a great. I had worked with Jesse Nelson before on a film, and mm -hmm. she wanted me to do it, so we did it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, but I, I think that everything is tending. I mean, when you, I saw In the Heights, mm -hmm. I have not seen Hamilton, but certainly the work that Miranda did uh, in the Heights is stunning. I felt and very real. You and one of the the leading ladies was a student of my husband's. Wow. At the time. Yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, and uh, taking a detour for a second, but I read somewhere that you also modeled for uh, uh, for the romantic novels. Uh, book. Yes, <laughs> when I my early years in New York, okay. I you know just to make money, I modeled and I did a magazine modeling. Oh, mm. these awful things! They were true romance, a true crime, and all of that. And I did a lot of, of uh, at the, um, the the industrial modeling for shows, yeah. indus industry shows. I did a lot of that. So was that again just uh, something that helped you, um, you know, pay the bills at that time? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, I I'm a baby uh, to the industry in certain respects, but you know, how were things before? Because I remember reading uh, from the film perspective. I remember reading you know, Marlon uh, and other people saying, I'm getting paid ridiculous sums of money to do something that mm -hmm. I, I don't know what else I would be doing. And uh, that's not necessarily the case right now with exception of the, you know, stars. Uh, yeah. was, was the industry, was the pay, you know, kind of better across the board before or not really? No, but it was also, you know, easier, cheaper to live. I mean, I think we made $50 a week off Broadway. Okay. And now they're making over a thousand, I think. I, I'm not quite sure. It's been a long time since I've done that. Yeah. But it, it uh, we made $50, which is what you could also get for unemployment. So we always laughed about, well, do we want to work or do we want to just collect unemployment? It's true. Yeah. <laughs> but and we worked. We all worked. Yeah. Um, that's very, very interesting. So, um, in terms of again, you know, the, the love of acting, I want I want to mm -hmm. pick your brain on all things acting related. Um, what have you found in your acting bag of tricks that, uh, in terms of methodology or approach, that really work well for you? Um, well, I I now work in a way that I don't plan. I mean, I I certainly know my material. I study, study, study. The script. The script is is golden to me. That is why I do something, and also uh, where I get all my information from. Mm -hmm. Because the way I work, I go in and I'm prepared for anything, 
whatever the other actor does, or whatever the director might ask me to do. I'm just sort of fluid now and so ready, you know, but, but my body, my mind reacts to whatever they're asking. I got you. And uh, by the way, was improv uh, something that you uh, studied at some point? I never studied it, but I did it. I did it in nightclubs. I did it in uh, different... Well, funny thing, they used to... When you were doing nightclubs, you were considered one of the funny people in New York. And they would call us that, the funny people. And we would get called in for commercials. And the reason was they were picking our brains because we would come in and immediately, if we were asked to improv, we did without any trouble. And we would also give them these wonderful ideas. And it turned out that they were like shooting our ideas and not hiring us. And they made a thing, I guess was sad, that they could only see something once or twice, I don't know, they could not keep calling someone back in for the idea. They had to either hire them or, you know, pay them for the idea. So that happened. It, that really happened. But you've also, you've done commercials, right? That was... Uh, yes. Yes, I have. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Was that a big part of what you were doing for a time? Or? I always considered myself, uh, what is the word? Uh, I was I was okay at it. I wasn't, you know, I didn't do great at it. I didn't make a fortune at it, which some people did. But I was, uh, I, I did it. You know, I always had one or two running. Let's put it that way. That's nice. Okay. Yeah, no, it was. And mm -hmm. you got your residuals from that. So that was a way of uh, keeping the body going. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's another thing that's changing in our business with uh, a lot of the commercials going non-union. So no residuals. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, a lot of the commercials are going non-union. Uh, some absolutely still are union, but a lot of yeah, them I didn't know that. Well, that's yeah. interesting. So things things have changed. The the yes, uh, they have. The years of old when you can uh, lend a national commercial and do really well for a long do time. Do really well, yeah. yeah. Not not quite that well anymore. <laughs> not, not so much. Not so much. Uh, that's wonderful. I, I wanted to ask you, again, you've had a chance to work with incredible actors. Uh, mm -hmm. You had a chance to work with Jack. You had a chance to work with... I, I'm, I'm not going to name it. We're going to be here for an, hour, for an hour just naming people. Yeah. Um, if, uh, without upsetting anybody, but if you had to pick... Uh, one or two people that you thought, my goodness, they are just incredible at what they do from an acting perspective. What would those people be? Or who would those people rather be? Who would they be? Um, well, I think I could easily pick two friends, Jack Nicholson and Bruce Dern. Yeah. And they both, in very different ways, but they both uh, were wonderful to work with. They gave me so much, both of them did. And Jack, I was very new to film when I worked with Jack. So that was a bit of, you know, uh, I went in with my heart in, in my mouth and not knowing what to expect really, you know. And, uh, but he was wonderful. He was absolutely wonderful. It could not have been better for me at the time. And the director, of course, Alexander Payne, who I worked with in Nebraska as well. Yeah, and uh, Bruce Dern as well? Bruce, yes, he's heaven. He, he's the storyteller. He keeps you going all the time, no matter what's happening. <laughs> no matter what time of the night it is, he's going to tell you a story. It's just kind of wonderful. Yeah, and that's important. He's, he's, he's up for it all the time. <laughs> that's, that's great. Uh, yeah. So what... I know that you know you love uh, you love acting and uh, you want to continue doing it. But uh, what what else drives you? What else? Yeah. Um, God, very little. Okay. <laughs> there you go. No, uh, you know I have a son. That's right. not. I mean, I, I have a son. He's fifty now, which mm -hmm. seems impossible. And uh, my husband died in 99, my second husband, Charles, my acting teacher husband. Yeah. And uh, there was a family, you know, that I had that I really don't have it. Now, Harry's here in California. Mm -hmm. He's engaged and he's in uh, San Diego most of the time. 
his fiance is a lawyer down there. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, I'm very much, you know, my own person still at 91. <laughs> and, you know, knock on wood. Uh, yeah. That's, that's great to hear because, again, I think all of us need to be driven uh, uh, by something. We need to be passionate. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's great that this is uh, it for you. And uh, that's probably yeah. why you're so successful at it. I think, well, again, you know, it was just something that it, it was just there. And I never questioned it. I guess that too. I never, ever questioned it. Yeah. Uh, were there times, well, since you never questioned it, that answers that question, but uh, I'm sure there were lean times. I'm sure there were people. Oh, God, were, yes. Yeah. Yes, there were very lean times. And there were times when even if I was working, I felt this is not what I want to do. You know, this material is not what I want to do. Right. I think I'm, I'm, I'm happier doing film than I was in the, on stage. I think I'm, I'm doing in a sense, better material, better writing. Uh, there's a, you know, there's a lot to say for film. Interesting. And uh, again, you know, stage, you have a lot more rehearsal, you have an ability mm -hmm. to really get into the character and you're shooting in sequence, not shooting, you're performing in sequence. Yeah. Where, whereas on, on screen, it's shot out of sequence, it's, you know, rewrites all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. You have no, you know, rehearsal usually. So you, you perform well in that environment, it doesn't bother you? No, it doesn't. Uh, I think, again, sort of the way I work, mm -hmm. that this, the out of sequence thing or the, the short scene thing it works for me. I mean, you know, I, I'm comfortable with that. And I think because you're an avid reader, all of the rewrites don't bother you either because it's just- Well, more... they, now that's not true because <laughs> I feel, oh boy, I've learned this thing. I've learned this sucker, you know, and, and yeah. this is great. And then all at once I'll get a, an email with, with a rewrite and I think, oh no, this can't be, but it is. And you relearn the thing. And uh, if, if you don't mind sharing this, but uh, just interesting for me, uh, from a curiosity perspective, as, as you've gotten older, um, does it become more difficult to learn lines or that part of the brain, it just wants it, learns, it stays? Well, no, it's not more difficult. Uh, I have trouble now with badly written lines. And I don't think I did when I was younger. I think I just sort of, oh yeah, blah, 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 I learned it. Yeah. And I learn differently now, and it's, but I learn in a way it's better as an actress, the way I learn now. So, uh, so how do you learn now? What's, what's the difference? Uh, I learn, you know, completely uh, take a script. I need time. I mm -hmm. don't do it as fast as I used to. Mm -hmm. And I just keep reading it, reading it, reading it. And then, uh, you know, dealing with a paragraph, dealing with a long speech, dealing with a scene or a page, whatever I feel like at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, what, that's what I do. And I do it by myself. Some people need to say the line to somebody. Mm -hmm. I've never done that. Yeah. I've always sort of learned everything on my own by myself. So some people are, you know, more visual, some more auditory, uh, would, you would be on the visual or, uh, you know, how does that work better for you? Well, I, I, I think I am better seeing it, mm -hmm. the visual than just, I, I don't think I could learn hearing something. Yeah. I, I don't, I think I am so used to, and with music, it's the same. I'm used to seeing the music. And that's wonderful. And do you still yeah. play? Uh, do you still sing? Well, I sang in Waitress uh, a year or so ago. <laughs> that is true. So, yes, I was singing then. Wonderful. had that wonderful song with the leading lady. Yeah. Um, and I danced with her, too. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember there are a few dances. Yeah. Uh, at least one. That's true. Um, yeah. It's one of my daughter's favorite musicals. And for her, uh, her 15th birthday, she, uh, she made us uh, go to New York so we can go to Broadway so she can see Waitress. See, uh, yeah. so yeah, it's we, a great musical, it really is. Yeah, it is. I, I loved the movie when it came out. Uh, and then the musical came uh, a number of mm -hmm. years later. 
So my daughter introduced me to the musical part, whereas I was so familiar with the film. With uh, the film, both, yeah. Both are terrific. Yeah. And uh, speaking of films, I, I loved you in uh, Welcome to Mooseport. Which is, <laughs> it's, oh. it's, it's a movie that anytime it comes on, I watch it. I, I don't know how many times I've seen this film, You've but it? it's, it's just, it's wonderful. You know, Gene Hackman is just, I, I, Gene Hackman is one of my favorite uh, actors anyway. Oh, uh, mine too. I should have mentioned him in the, the list of, of great actors. Yeah. He's, he is, he's one. And that was his last film. Really? Yeah. Wow, I did not realize that. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's just, it's, it's a wonderful movie and it has, it has a proper energy to it. Uh, yeah. That, yeah, I think you, you fit so perfectly into that role. <laughs> and uh, my wife, when, when I was telling her you'd be coming on, she, uh, she remembers your face and she didn't remember the name. And she's like, where, where did I see her? I said, well, in and out which we both love. You know, mm -hmm. welcome to Mooseport, which we both loved. And then it started kind and of- And then she knew, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, I- Yeah, that was, that was in Toronto. We shot that in Toronto. So that was interesting. Yeah. Um, what uh, now? Again, uh, out of the because you've done so many projects, and you're even though you started, uh, you know, your on-screen acting uh, uh, when you were 60, you already mm -hmm. are at 112 uh, IMDb credits anyway. By the way, for this, you'll get one more, so you'll be at. Oh, <laughs> yay! <laughs> but you've eclipsed 100. That's that's where I was yeah. going with this. Um, if you um, think back. Uh, obviously, Nebraska is, is special for the Oscar nom, uh, but which project really stands out to you and uh, why? Well, you know, Nebraska was also the making of it was, mm -hmm. I, I, I hate to use the word wonderful, but it's true. It was a wonderful experience. Uh, it was, we knew it was something special. We truly did, all of us, I think, realize that we were in the middle of something very special. And uh, I still remember some of those scenes, the making of it, what we went, what we did. It was an, an easy shoot. Mm -hmm. I mean, and Alexander and I've talked about this to a certain degree. And it was like the film it was there. No one pushed it. Yeah. No one made it. It was just happening around us. It was one. It was just a great experience. Um, did you? Did Alexander ever tell you why he didn't initially see you as the character and why he kind of had to? Be yes, it, you know, in, in *Son of a* not *Son of a Woman* in uh, about Schmidt, mm -hmm. he felt that I was this woman. He thought this is who I was. Okay. And he said, she's too sweet. She's too nice. Yeah. She didn't real. He didn't realize that I could be a bitch. <laughs> and how did you go about showing that? It was the, like, I, I need to audition and show you another side of me. Well, my agents kept after them to see me. And, and they kept saying, and the, and the casting director knew me. You know, okay. and so they were saying, we loved you, we loved you, but she's not right for this. She's not right. And they just, my agents kept saying, just see her, just see her. Okay. And he couldn't find anyone. He truly, again, that's how I got about Schmidt. The same thing happened. He couldn't find anyone. And finally, he listened to my agents and saw me and, and hired me for it. So the same thing happened again. So he finally, I think to get them off his back, he said, have her send me a, uh, a video, have her send me a, a, a screening. So we, I was in New York. I don't even remember what I was doing, but I was in New York and I went to the New York office and one of the agents read with me and we did it. And he got it and he again said, Oh my God, she's right for it. <laughs> because that, he told me this about Schmidt. He said, I didn't know that you were right for it till I saw the, this, you know, screening. And he said, and then I saw this and I thought, my God, she's right for it. Which, and the same thing happened. 
which to me means that this is twice that it happened. So anytime he's shooting a new project, he needs to see you for it. <laughs> Tell Alexander that. <laughs> Alexander, if you're if you're watching this, please uh, re <laughs> reach out to June. Uh, so, if uh, again for all the actors uh, watching this, uh, being on so many sets. Are there, you know, three kind of main advices or tips that you would give to everybody when they're on set of these are important to follow? Well, I think the first thing is to forget yourself. Mm. I mean, you're there to do the work and it's not personal, <laughs> whatever anybody says to you, it's not personal. And you have to go through life with this because otherwise, things can tear you up and on set there's so much that can tear you up mm -hmm. and i think you just have to to know that you have this this is what you're doing and it's as simple as that interesting um oh god the old know yourself the better you know who you are the better off you are and uh, I guess it have a lot of therapy. <laughs> I think that helps. <laughs> sure. Uh, it and does. I, I think we as actors, because we are so interested in people and what makes people tick, we inevitably start trying to understand what makes us tick. So yeah. therapy is, is one way to help yeah. cover that. Now, I had seven years and it was wonderful. I mean, it made a huge difference in my life. It made a huge difference in me as an actress at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's great to hear. Um, in terms of, again, you've done dramatic parts, you've done comedic parts. Is there one you like more than the other? Uh, no, not really. Mm -hmm. I love comedy. I mean, and I've done so much. I did a lot of comedy on stage. Right. And I've done a lot on, on film. And it still surprises me when people describe me as that funny June Squibb. <laughs> but I, I can only say I never think of myself as that. But that's good. But that that, yeah. seems, that seems to have stayed with you. In New York, they were calling you those funny people. Funny and people, oh, yeah. No, funny. and they do. It's it's it because I think the work that I've done, you know, basically I probably have done more comedy than drama. It's it's more of what I remember, although Table 17, I think that was the, the movie. I really enjoyed you there as well. Uh, mm -hmm. that, was, that was a little more dramatic. Uh, yeah. Interesting art film. Um, what uh, is one thing that most people do not know about you? Do not know about me? Yeah. Hmm. I'm good in math. You're good in math? That's great. I'm good in math. That shocks people a lot. It, you're talking and talking about what, what you had in school or this or that. I had a major in math in high school wow. <laughs> and I was good at it. Okay. Well, I, I'll keep you on the speed dial because my son uh, is not great at math. So uh, he, he. Needs oh, well, I don't know about now. This was years ago. <laughs> my mind was good with math then. But you know, they say music, if, that if you're good in math, you're good in music. And I was pretty good in music. So. Yeah. Yeah. There's that. I've, I've definitely yeah. that analogy. Um, is there a quote that, uh, that sticks out with you that kind of helped you through your life? Mm. I can't think of anything. Mm -hmm. No, that's I really can't. Yeah, that's that's a good answer as well, because yeah, it just means that you're open to anything that's uh, that's coming in. So there's not mm -hmm. one particular thing. It's it's a variety, and it changes yeah. as you go through life. Yeah, it's it's uh, also a great uh, answer. Um, and again, because the show is called The Love of Acting. Where, is, where does your love of acting come from? I have no idea because my family certainly had no... My mother played the piano. She played for silent films. So in a way, she did some theater work. Right. And I had her sister tap danced. And I think that's one reason I started dancing. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, but. I, I really don't have any idea where it came from because there was no nothing in my family that pushed me towards it or even helped me towards it at all. 
you were just born with it. That's that's I, it. yeah. Um, and to all the actors that are watching this, that are looking at your marvelous career and thinking how they can have longevity in the business, is there any advice that you would offer to them? Uh, I think each role that I ever did, even the smallest mm -hmm. in off off Broadway that it was important at the time it was the most important thing mm -hmm. not in my life i had a you know family but it was as far as work went there was nothing i ever did in my entire life that was not important to me mm -hmm. and i think that has made a huge difference in the way people look at me because you know it, remembering things that uh I perhaps didn't think of as, as that important, but at the time they were, they were very, very, they were, they were my life. Each thing I did was. It's yeah. Be, and then people see it and they see mm -hmm. how, how you're treating it. And it's not just about being professional. It's that you're really invested in it. So. Uh, completely, completely. I do feel I did that. Yeah. That's great. Great advice. Um, who's, uh, who's your best friend in the industry that, uh, you've kind of, uh, been with, uh, for a while? Oh, God. I guess Kitty McMillan. Uh, okay. she was, I don't know, do you remember Ken McMillan? Actor, um, character not, actor? Not the name, but I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll he, sure he was the probably before you saw a lot of films. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I I was good friends with Ken in New York, and he married Kitty, and we became good friends, and she had a child, I had a child, and uh, out here, she was my agent for a while. She oh. worked in, in, I was with the uh, Martin Gage agency, and she worked there, and now she reads all my scripts. I would not take anything that she didn't read and give me her honest opinion on. That's great. And we, we, uh, she lives in, in Sherman Oaks where I live. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we see each other all the time. Not so much now, of course, mm -hmm. but, uh, and I, she many times travels with me. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's, that's great that you've had somebody uh, with you for, uh, for a period of a time. It's important. Oh God, this goes back to probably the 70s i would imagine yeah well that's 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 fantastic uh, yeah last uh question for you uh if you had a chance to uh, you know go back in time and talk to a young june who's just starting out in acting and give her one piece of acting advice what would that be oh gosh don't give up. <laughs> I think that would be it. I, I, I'm, going, I'm thinking in my mind some of, of what I did, you know, originally, how to get into the started, to get even before Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And um, I just don't give up. Yep. Uh, and you mentioned determination, and I'm taking all these notes <laughs> for myself. Uh, you mentioned determination and don't give up. Yeah, it's, it's right in that same ballpark, which yeah. raises one more question. I, 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 apparently, I came up with another one. Um, how do you want to be remembered? As an actress. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. That's great. June, I can't thank you enough for joining me. It's been such a pleasure. And this has I, been a, a delight. I've enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, thanks to everybody for tuning in to the love of acting. This is why we do this show. <laughs>